Palaroga Shark Media. Hi, and welcome to Entertainment Daily, a short roundup of the top entertainment stories in today's news. Taylor Swift allegedly orchestrated Kanye West's removal from the Super Bowl after the rapper attempted to overshadow her on Sunday night. Former NFL star Brandon Marshall has claimed. According to Marshall, Swift took action to have Kanye removed after he deliberately secured seats in front of hers at Las Vegas' Allegiant Stadium. Taylor, who passionately cheered on her boyfriend Travis and the Kansas City Chiefs to victory, was situated in a VIP box with celebrity companions Blake Lively, Ice Spice and Lana Del Rey, alongside Kelsey's family. Marshall, a retired NFL wide receiver, insinuated that Kanye strategically positioned himself in front of Taylor to potentially disrupt any footage of her during the game's broadcast. Kanye was trying to leverage her celebrity, Marshall stated on the I Am Athlete podcast. So Taylor Swift gets upset. She takes action, makes a call or two. Everyone gets involved. He gets kicked out of the stadium. The source of Marshall's information is unclear and there is no evidence to support his allegations. Additionally, the former NFL player initially confused Swift with fellow pop star Katy Perry when making his claims. Nevertheless, if proven true, the incident signifies a significant victory for Swift in her long-standing feud with the controversial rapper, which dates back to 2009 when Kanye infamously interrupted her acceptance speech at the VMAs. Kanye was seen at the Super Bowl with his wife Bianca Sensori on Sunday, although it remains unclear when he departed the stadium. Sporting a full face covering with a white crucifix and an all-black leather outfit, Kanye was seemingly entering hostile territory, especially with his ex-wife Kim also present at the event. Kanye's divorce from Kim was finalized in 2021, and she has since been romantically linked with Baltimore Ravens wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr., Months after Meghan Markle and Prince Harry ended their partnership with Spotify, the couple's next move in the podcasting sphere has been unveiled. The Duchess of Sussex has inked a fresh podcast deal with Lemonada Media. Following the initial report by Deadline on Tuesday, an announcement surfaced on the duo's new website. Alongside the distribution of one season of her Spotify series archetypes to all podcast platforms, Meghan is gearing up to launch a new show, as its host, although specifics about the untitled project remain under wraps. Megan has broken a silence to defend the new Sussex.com site following a spate of criticism. Royal Insiders told Mail Online that the website, created by Canadian Agency Article, made no sense and created a blurred line between the past and the present as the couple were told to drop their Sussex title in 2020 after quitting as working royals. Responding to the criticism, Megan said in a statement, There is a reason I have worked with Ryan and the talented team at Article for a decade, their attention to detail, their creativity and care, and the thoughtful approach to design as well as to the user experience. They're not just designers, they are collaborators who elevate your ideas into visual identities. They're a very special company, plus they're Canadian, so I'm a fan. The website is operated by the Office of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and is a one-stop shop for all their activities, but there is no reference in their biographies about any of their links to the royal family, with Harry, who is fifth in line to the throne, described as a humanitarian, military veteran, mental health advocate, and environmental campaigner. More entertainment in just a moment. John Stewart's first show back as part-time host of Comedy Central's late-night flagship drew 930,000 viewers Monday, the most for a daily show installment in almost six years. With Stewart, who left the anchor desk in 2015, hitting familiar comic beats and an aggressive, if brief, marketing push behind his return, the Daily Show also recorded its best same-day rating among adults 25 to 54 since August of 2017, and more than doubled the show's audience for both the final weeks of Noah's tenure and the series of guest hosts it featured in 2023. The final 10 weeks of Noah's term as host, after he announced he would depart, averaged about 416,000 nightly viewers. Stewart will host The Daily Show on Monday nights only through the presidential election in November. The show's team of correspondents will take over hosting duties on other nights with Jordan Klepper on deck for the remainder of the week. Dakota Johnson 
didn't let the blisteringly negative reviews for her new superhero movie, Madam Web, stop her from showing off another red-hot ensemble for the film's Mexico City premiere on Tuesday. The 34-year-old actress had been beset by a wave of critical pans for the film, which takes place in the Spider-Man universe, with critics branding it an embarrassing mess and the worst comic book movie ever. So far, the movie is also tracking to come in behind the Bob Marley biopic One Love at the box office during the Valentine's Day to President's Day stretch, according to Deadline. And there you have it. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. My thanks to John McDermott. I'm Mark Francis, and this is Entertainment Daily. Entertainment Daily.